Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for October 2nd, 2020. It's Friday, y'all. That's right. We made it to Friday, and it's going to be a great Friday because it's Vault Friday, and we're talking about using the Vault API. That's what we're going to focus on today because that is the next objective, the me next main objective in our Vault certification series. And just like the Vault UI that was last week, this one is going to be a one-parter because there's really only two enabling objectives under our primary objective. So it is easy to storm through this one. And that is exactly what we're going to do. Because honestly, for the associate exam, HashiCorp doesn't expect you to know a ton about the Vault API, just to be aware of it exists, that it exists, a little bit on how to use it, and that's it. That's all you need to know. You're not going to be like writing programming on it. It's just a little bit. So that's what we're going to cover in today's episode. I just want to remind you that I have officially published my Vault certification guide on LeanPub, but I am working my way through writing it. So it's only like 20% done but it is published and available. You can buy a copy now. I will finish it. That is my promise. I will finish it. Some people have already bought it, so I'm on the hook. I am almost done objective three, and I'm also gonna include links to the videos that I've been doing in the guide so you can watch me talk if you want, if that's more enjoyable for you. So there's gonna be, I'm really, I'm excited about this guide. Anyway, before we get into the topic, let's check in. How are you? What's going on? Happy Friday. You made it all the way to Friday. I hope you're feeling good. I hope you've got something interesting planned for the weekend. I'm going to be going out apple picking. And that's always fun for me because <laughs> I like picking apples. It's just fun. They have apple cider donuts at the place that we go to, which are amazing. They, they like make them there. They're fresh. And when they give them to you, they're still hot. Oh, ooh, oh. so I'm very excited for that. I hope you have something good planned for the weekend. Now let's talk about the Vault API. I guess the easiest way to start out would be just to let me share out my screen here. If you go to vaultproject.io and click on the API tab, this is the API. This is the easiest way to just re reference it and refer to it. And probably the most important thing here is that you're basically going to use the vault address and append pass. Now, you know, we've talked about before, everything in vault is a path. And in this case, all API routes are currently prefixed with V1 of the API because this is V1 of the API. I imagine at some point there might be a V2, but right now it's V1. So that's important to know in terms of authentication. Because Vault does require authentication to talk to it, you're basically going to be using a token, which, side note, you've been using tokens all along even if you didn't realize it. Well, now you're explicitly using the token and the way you do that is adding an HTTP header. The name of the header is x-vault-token. The x is because you're extending the header spec. Not everyone uses this, even though they probably should, but they're letting you know this is an extension, not a standard header, and then the name of the header, which is vault token. That's all you need to do. That's all you need to know to interact with the vault API. We're going to be using curl to do that. Okay. So if you go to this page, you can look up all the different things that are down the left side of the page to know more about referencing a secrets engine or, and all the paths that are available there, but we're not going to get into that. Let's jump over to visual studio code. And I've got a little demo set up here. So what we're going to do is we'll start by getting the vault server de uh, the dev instance of the vault server spun up, go ahead and do that. And then in a separate terminal that I have prepped here, we're going to export the vault address into an environment variable. Now that's important because that is going to be used for vault login. It will also be used when we use curl a little further down. So it's a dual purpose there. It's two reasons to use it. And then let's go ahead and get logged into our vault using the root token so we can configure some things in here. And if you've watched previous videos, I'm gonna go through this pretty fast because you can refer back to those previous videos on how to use the Vault CLI to get things configured. I don't wanna run through that all here, but basically I'm gonna do a few things. I'm gonna enable the user pass authentication method and add myself as a new user with the password tacos, because of course I am. So we'll go ahead and run those two commands here. There we go, I've successfully enabled myself as a user. Now let's enable a new secrets engine using the CLI. 
we're gonna enable a V2 version of the key value store secrets engine at the path KV2. And we're gonna add one secret to it at the path KV2 slash toppings and set meat equal to chicken because I'm having some chicken tacos. All right, so we'll go ahead and write those two out. That secret is now on that secrets engine. And of course, if I'm going to log in as Ned, I don't yet have permissions to that new secrets engine that I just created. So I'm going to up write a policy that will give me access, full access to that secrets engine. I'm not gonna go through the contents of the policy. It's basically all access on the data. Actually, maybe I will. Let's go over and look at that key value policy. There's two paths in here. One's KV2 slash data, which is the path for all the data in version two of the key value secrets engine. And then the other path is metadata and the capabilities there is simply list. So that's so you can get stuff like version information about the secrets that are stored in there. So you really need both of those. And that sort of gives you a hint as to what pass we'll use when we're using curl with the API. All right, so enough of that, let's get back to you here. And I'm gonna go ahead and write that policy out. There we, there we go. All right, I've created that policy and now I'm going to add that po policy to my login. So when I log in, I will automatically get that policy. All right, so that's all the stuff we're gonna do with the Vault CLI. Now we're gonna start using the API instead. It's a little bit different. So the first thing we need to do, as you might imagine, is log in as ourselves. I'm gonna log in as myself. And that's gonna be a post request because I have to send information to the Vault server and then receive a response. So in the request, it's a post and I'm gonna give it my username and password. In the response that I get back from Vault, it will give me a bunch of information, including my token that I can use to do further actions on the Vault server. So we're using curl. The request type is post. The data, this is the data that I'm submitting as part of the post, and it's a JSON document that specifies username is Ned and password is tacos. Obviously, the package of data will be different for different authentication providers, but this is what's required for user pass. And then where do I send this information? Well, the path here, it's gonna be the vault address. Remember, we have that stored in our environment variable, v1, because it's always v1. This is an authentication method, so auth. The user pass, user pass method I enabled at the default path, so it's gonna be user pass. I want to perform a login and I want to perform that login as me. So that's the full path that we're sending this request to. And I'm going to pipe the response through JQ or, or a JSON query so that it'll format it nicely for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this whole thing here, copy it, paste it down here, hit enter. And there we go. We got a good response from our vault server and it's nicely formatted. Thank you JQ for nicely formatting things for us. And if you look under the auth section in here, you can see it gave us our client token and our accessor. And it actually also gave us the policies that were assigned. So you can see, I got that allow KV2 policy that I need to read secrets. Now, what we wanna do is store this token ID in a variable so that we can use it in a future request. So I'm going to paste the updated value in here, and I'm just gonna store this as a variable. So, uh, go. Okay, now that's stored as a variable. Now I want to get a secret that I've stored out of the secrets engine. The way that I'm going to do that is that's a get request because we're getting information out of the server. We're not pushing information up, we're getting info out. Now you'll notice I've added a header argument in here. So I'm doing curl dash dash header and there's that x dash vault dash token header along with the token value I've stored in this variable. See, that's why we did it so we can easily refer to it. And I'm submitting the request for information is going to KV2, that's the new secrets engine that we enabled. I want data, so I have to go to the data endpoint on that secrets engine, and the secret that I want to request is toppings. So that's what I wanna get, and once again, we're gonna pipe this through JQ just so it looks a little bit nicer in its response. So I'll go ahead and copy this and paste it down here. And there we go. It gave us a pretty big response. It didn't just give us the secret that we're looking for. It actually gave us a bunch of additional information about that secret, like the version. This is 
version one of the secret in case we needed to know that. The other thing that we need to know is what's the actual secret and that's stored under data, data, and then it has the key value pair here, meat is chicken. Now, what if we wanted to put a new secret up to vault server? Well, that would be a post request because now we're sending information again. We're not pulling information down. We are pushing information up to vault. So once again, I need that header, right? And I need to set the request type to post. And in the data, I'm going to supply a new value for the secret data that's stored at toppings. So the path is actually going to be the same as before, but the action has changed to post and I'm submitting updated data here. So I'll go ahead and do that and copy it and paste it down here. And now it's pushed a new version of that secret. We can see version two is here. So I get a response that tells me a little information about what just happened. And if we rerun our original get secret request, oh, well, that didn't work. Let's try that again. Go ahead and copy that and paste it down here. Now we can see instead of meat equals chicken, we've got cheese equals Jack. Yes, there's also a way to append what's already there with a new some new information, but that's the very basics. And really, there's only two objectives when it comes to uh, two enabling objectives for this terminal objective of understanding the API. The first one is that you absolutely need to, uh, let me find the actual verbiage here. Well, I can't find it. The first objective is basically be aware of the API, know it exists. The second thing is that you need to be able to authenticate to it. And we saw how we just did that using the user pass method, but any other method is gonna be basically the same. Then the third thing you need to do is know how to interact with secrets engines to access existing secrets. And that's pretty much it. That's all they want you to know about the API. Everything else is outside the scope of this certification. So hopefully that's helpful to you and that'll wrap up this objective. The next objective we're going into is all about the vault server and the internals on it. And there's like 10, enabling objectives for it. So it's gonna take a while to get through that. That's gonna be a few weeks, but these last few were nice. They were one and done. Uh, this wraps up this, this objective and this wraps it up for me for the week. So that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe out there, and I will see you next week. Bye for now.